Thank you so much. Such a privilege and an honor to get to be with each of you and to be a part of the symposium. I cannot express what a joy it is to have the invitation. I've been told I'm on a very strict uh, time frame, so I'll go very fast, I promise. Uh, let me also say, as you can tell, I'm pastor of a Pentecostal church. So if I get loud, please don't be offended. It's just the way I am. I'm going to read Genesis chapter 3, verse number 12 is where I'm going to start. And again, I want to express, I went last night, if you didn't get a chance to go last night to the symposium, you really missed it. It was, it was great. I wasn't one of the speakers, but they did an awesome job. Tomorrow I'll be one of the speakers, so I can't promise what anything, you know. We'll see how it goes. Genesis chapter 12, um, excuse me, chapter 3, verse number 12. The Bible said, And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. Above every beast of the field, upon the belly, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. I think it would be good if we pray just a second, because I do want the Lord to speak to us. Can we do that? Is that all right? Let's pray for just a second. Jesus, we thank you for the privilege and the honor to be able to come into this place today. I thank you for the privilege to be used by you. I ask that you would reach down and anoint this servant, this vessel. The Lord, you know there's nothing special about me, but there is everything special about you. Speak to us today through your word, Jesus, in your name we pray. And everybody said amen. Thank you. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 21, the Bible said, Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. When Adam and Eve first sinned and first fell into sin, the response by God was to cover their sin. We still find that in ourselves when we sin, we have an inward desire to cover our sin and our mistakes. This desire is God originated, that God wants to cover our sin. When Abraham was about to offer Isaac on the altar and the Lord had spoken to Abraham and said, take your son, your only son, and offer him as a sacrifice. And they're beginning to walk up the mountain and Abraham looks at the servants and says, you guys stay here me and the boy, we're going to go up further. And around this part, point, I imagine that Isaac had a few questions. And so he asks, he says, Dad, where is the sacrifice? Where is what we're going to offer? To which Abraham, in Genesis chapter 22 and verse number 8, the Bible said, Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. I submit to you that when we get down to the very basis, what we really need is that lamb. And Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. This is the basis of Christianity. God provided himself a lamb. And they go up onto the mountain, to the altar, and there as Isaac is about to be offered. Abraham looks and finds in the thicket a ram, and they grab that ram and sacrifice it. The psalmist would speak of all of us when he would say in Psalm 51 and verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Paul would also adequately or accurately describe this and the penalty for our sin. Excuse me, I told you I might get loud. I didn't realize. He would accurately describe the penalty for our sins when he declared, for the wages of sin is death. And also by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 22, he said, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, 
is no remission. Isaiah prophesied in chapter 9, verse number 6. We only talk about it at Christmas, but it's good all year long. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Matthew goes on to describe what transpired, what's transpired when he said, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. In Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 8, John would say that in reference to Jesus, that he was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. I don't know about you, but I still am thankful for that lamb that was slain for my sins because I was guilty and nobody else could have done it. Nobody else was just. Nobody else was perfect. Nobody else could have covered my sin. Leviticus tells an interesting story in chapter 16. I'll just give you a paraphrase because of time instead of reading the passage. The story goes that hmm, when the Lord set up everything, he set two goats. He told them to bring two goats and present them to the Lord at the tabernacle of the congregation and then they would bring the goats and they would cast lots. And one lot would fall on one and another on the other. And the one goat that fell that the Lord's lot fell on, they would take this goat and they would offer it as a sacrifice upon the altar. But the other goat they would take into the fields and they would let it run and go free. I submit to you that we today, we each and every one of us, whether we recognize it or not, were that one goat that was set free because there was this man, Christ Jesus, that said, I'll lay down my life to give you freedom and let you run. I thank God that he was willing to do that. Romans chapter 6, verse number 23 Hopefully you know it. He said, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Chapter 5, verse number 19. Remember, I referenced these a little earlier. He said, for as one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Jesus Christ is that one obedience that all of us needed. I thank God. Let me also, as I come to a close, in reference to the symposium, as I've sat and watched this nation that I love and that God blessed us with, I realize what we need more than ever before are men and women of every walk of life, of every different faith that have a desire and a relationship with Jesus Christ to stand up and let their voices be heard. I've sat and watched as every, uh, every mindset and every, just everything you can possibly think has now been brought to the forefront in our society. And everything is brought to the forefront except for God. In this hour, we need to be reminded. We need young people like yourselves. We need college graduates. We need high school dropouts. We need a people that will turn around and say, Jesus Christ is still our hope. God bless you. Thank you so much for having me.